I think there are two major changes in China studies, in the social sciences, in U.S. academia. Uh, the first is a change of focus from central politics to local politics, especially to the study of local officials and ordinary citizens.、Um, Scholars used to care much about what officials in the national government thought,、uh, their relations with each other, and the policies they made. In recent years, scholars in the U.S. realized that there are a lot of local variations in China, and that every local government needs to come up with their own governance strategies to promote economic development and maintain. Social stability. Relatedly, scholars in recent years also tend to put more emphasis on ordinary citizens, on what they think, how they behave in certain situations, and their relations with the government. So, China studies have moved away from a monolithic view of China to a view that sees China as a large country with much diversity.、Uh, the second change. I think is the increasing use of quantitative data in China studies,、uh, including surveys,、um, government statistics, web scraping, and historical data.、Uh, the use of systematic data has revolutionized our understanding of China because scholars traditionally relied on the study of a few villages or counties.、Uh, while these case studies are are useful, they cannot tell us what China as a whole. Looks like so. All in all, I think these changes in academic research have really provided a more nuanced perspective on China. Yeah, I think part of the reason why younger China experts do not have the same level of knowledge with the older generation is、um, the training in. U.S. universities has become too specialized.、Uh, China scholars used to be expected to study Chinese history, culture, economy, politics, and society,、uh, but now they are supposed to specialize in one area.、Uh, to promote mutual understanding, I think one thing the universities can do is to promote more general education and set up more China-specific programs. For example, master's program to train. The next generation of China experts with broad knowledge about China. I also think that people-to-people -people exchange is critical.、Uh, both the U.S. and Chinese governments should welcome students, visiting scholars, and policymakers from the other side to visit, and also encourage them to bring their experiences back to their home country to inform policymaking. Well, there was a Harvard economist,、uh, I think, in the 1960s, 70s, Alexander Gerschenkron,、uh, who argued that the development of early modernizers is different from that of late modernizers. And、uh, by early modernizers, he meant European and North American countries. And when they modernized, they did not face much international competition, and also they were not in a rush, so they could gradually transform their economies. And also societies, but for late modernizers, for example, China,、uh, they need to compete with a large number of developed countries. Also, there's a sense of urgency that we need to catch up very quickly. In developing countries, the government needs to provide public goods to the society and also provide information for the economy and help companies compete in the international market. The lesson is also true, I think, for. Other developing countries, their governments need to act as the engine of their economic growth. Yes, I think、uh, one of the biggest misunderstandings of state building is the notion that every country in the world will follow the path of Western European countries in state development. That is.、Uh, A lot of scholars and also policymakers expect that every country will develop the same institutions, for example, representative institutions and checks and balances, like those in Europe and also in North America. But the reality is that the majority of the world population have not been living under a European-style political system, and also most countries are not moving in the direction to become more like Europe. In other words, not all roads lead to Rome. 
to mitigate this misunderstanding, I think we need more research on the varieties of state building um, experiences in different regions of the world, for example, in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and also Latin America. I think we need to realize that every country has its own path of state development, and also this diversity should be celebrated rather than discouraged.